Who is, Frank, though, the most complete <laughs> team in the American League? I'm going to make you think you know, about this one yeah, a little. This is a tough, tough question. We have, like, three super teams in the American League this year. But the one on the outside looking in right now that I'm starting to watch closely is the Cleveland Indians. For some reason, adding Josh Donaldson to the rest of that offensive mix, along with that pitching staff, they're going to be a tough chore for anyone in October. So right now, I'm looking at the Cleveland Indians as my complete team, my sleeper, to get to the World Series this year. Alex, I gotta, what do you think? It hurts me to say this because I bleed blue, but I have to say, unfortunately, the Red Sox. <laughs> oh, <laughs> painful. Uh, you know, of all the great moves that Dave Dombrowski's made, uh, you have to think the number one best move has been Alex Cora. In a market where Joe Torre in 2007 made $7.5 million, Alex Cora came in at $800,000. Might be the best investment that the Red Sox have done in a very long time. What he's done with that team is fantastic because you know, talking to a lot of their players, he says, this guy gives me confidence, he's a great communicator, and he's also very diverse in the way we play. We play the long game, mm -hmm. we play the short game, and he's very unpredictable, like a poker player. You don't know what's gonna be the next move. For me, they're dangerous in October, and Alex Cora can be the X Factor to take him to the championship. I'm really shocked you didn't say the Houston Astros, but we know how dangerous the World Series champions are from last year. For some reason, I just can't pick them to go back to back. Why? Yeah. It's just one of those things that in baseball, you don't see too many teams go back to back. Doesn't happen often. They have the, the pitching to do it. But right now, I'm, I'm leaning towards the Cleveland Indians to sneak into the World Series this year. You know, it's interesting. When you think about the great teams, I remember Pat Riley says, we're going to do it again next year with the Lakers, right? It's hard to repeat. This is hard, Frank. And I know you were part of a championship team. When a team wins a championship, there's a small part of you that dies. And what I mean by that is, think about it, Kevin. Ever since you were a little kid, you first want to get a college scholarship, then you want to go to the major leagues, then you want to make an All-Star game, then you want to win the World Series. Well, that's, that's the ultimate. And when you reach that, whether you like it or not, there's a little bit of the edge that comes off. I think the opposite is true when you have a big failure, mm -hmm. that you now want to have a chip on your shoulder, like you said about Donaldson. Did it happen to you guys in 09? Because I'm, I'm looking at this Houston team, and last year was all about Altuve and Carrera. Mm -hmm. And now it's, we're talking about Bregman as the MVP of that club and a chance for a league MVP. So you're right about that. I'm just I'm asking that question because I've seen teams, they go separate ways after they win a championship. It's really hard to keep that team together for a second, second run. I think, I think we're pretty good. But even if you have a 10 or 20% drop off, you, you cannot win in this league at 80%. And what I mean by that is when you talk to the Houston Astros players, they're all great young players. They have great attitudes. Bregman is the epitome of he, he's got Pete Rose in the greatest way type makeup. He yeah. loves the game. He's there at noon. He leaves at 1 in the morning. He's breathing in, you know, 24-7. But at the end of the day, are they thinking maybe a little bit more about social media following, building out their brand? Now they're, you know, it, it's different, right? Let me interject yeah. one other thing with the Astros. They're great. They're talented. Certainly they got a good chance as anybody we know that. But they did something a little different. That team is as good of a clubhouse I would argue this has been in the last, you know, 15, 20 years. They're so tight. They're so together. Um, well, they changed that dynamic a little bit, didn't they? You know, Jeff Luno, the GM, goes out, and they get the kid from Toronto comes in there, and Ozuna, who had, you know, the domestic abuse thing on him, and he had to deal with that in the mm -hmm. clubhouse. It just seemed like a move that didn't necessarily fit. And I'm curious if you think that has any effect or will have any effect. Well, that's an interesting one because a lot of teams like the Dodgers, Toronto, other teams passed on this move. And Jeff Luno has been really the gold standard of getting great players like Verlander with A-plus makeup, whether that's McCann, whether that's Carlos Beltran. Mm -hmm. This move was a little bit uh, kind of out of left field. And again, they signed this young man. And again, I don't know much about his situation, but I do know they went like, you know, they lost, you know, 10 out of 12. So again, you gotta watch things like that because energy is so sensitive in a clubhouse. You have 25 guys in one clubhouse, mm -hmm. you have good energy, you have to have a brotherhood. And sometimes, I know some players spoke out about it in a negative way, so that's a great question, Berlander, Kevin. one of them, but yeah. Right, well, I think it was a desperation move. They needed a closer, they had to have a closer. They could not deal with Giles anymore as a closer. This kid is legitimate. You saw him in, in, with Toronto, I mean, he shut down a lot of great clubs. Everyone deserves a second chance, but the bottom line is, how's he gonna fit down the stretch with chemistry that club? Right, and the thing is, he hasn't really been their closer. I mean, he's been, they've been shuffling around. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out for these Astros. Meanwhile, guys, great matchup Saturday on FS1. The Red Sox hosting the Astros. I mean, that obviously could be a preview of the ALCS. 3.30 Eastern on FS1. You can stream it live on the Fox Sports app, too. Good stuff.